All right, hello everybody. My name is John, and today is a very exciting day because this morning, Thom, the developer of Dice Cloud, uh, made a post saying that we are now entering into a feature freeze for the 2.0 release of Dice Cloud. This is very exciting because I've been holding off on making these videos until this announcement. Uh, because I didn't want to go ahead and make tutorials if there was still a high chance that things are going to uh, change a whole bunch. So, the goal of this video, this is an unscripted one, uh, this is going to be the first of a series of videos. Uh, the later ones are going to be scripted, I'm going to use these later videos to talk more about the more advanced things you can do in version 2 of Dice Cloud. Uh, but this video is mainly just going to be an introduction, uh, an FAQ, and a tutorial on how to build your first character. So, first of all, uh, if you're watching this video, I assume you already know what Dice Cloud V1 is, at least, or are vaguely familiar with Dice Cloud. If you're not, it's essentially a website that allows you to build character sheets for uh, tabletop RPGs. Um, also, if you are familiar with Dice Cloud, I hope you have joined the Discord already. It's going to be necessary for a certain part of building your character. Um, so, and also, it's just a great place where we can all as a community help you out and help you build your characters. And if you run into any bugs or if you're not sure how to do something, we can tell you how to do that in the Discord. There's also a subreddit which is fairly active, but the Discord is always going to be the place where you can get answers most rapidly. All right, so what is V2? Uh, V2 is the second version of Dice Cloud. Um, version 1 uh, has been out for a long time. You could find that at dicecloud.com. Version 2 is open to all users, regardless of patronage. Um, it's currently in open beta as of October 16th, 2022. Um, and you can access it by going to beta.dicecloud.com. Uh, this may eventually change. I believe in the future, version one is going to move to old.dicecloud.com and version two will just become dicecloud.com, but that hasn't happened yet as of the creation of this video. Now in V2, uh, just as there was in V1, there is sort of a distinction between levels of patronage. Um, by the way, at this point in time, uh, version 1 is entirely open to every user. All of the features, including libraries and V1, are open to all users regardless of patronage because that sort of tiering has moved over to version 2. So what rewards does being a patron actually grant in version 2? While it depends on the tier, most of the options grant the following features not available to the base users. One, a dark mode. Uh, this right here is a new account I just whipped up so I could uh, walk everyone through the very basics of how to get started. Uh, if you don't have an account yet, I believe there's just like a create account button on the home page. Uh, it should be very obvious. You can create your own username and password or you can log in with Google or I think you can also log in with Patreon if you want. Um, if you don't log in with Patreon and you are a patron, you'll need to link them in your account settings, but you can do that and figure that out on your own. Um, but we are currently in a light mode and so had this account been linked to a patronage account uh, that was paying for a certain tier, they would get access to a dark mode, which, take it from me, looks a lot nicer. Um, the second thing you get by being a patron is access to creating and editing libraries. And now, this is a big thing about version 2. Uh, version 2, unlike version 1, is really centralized around the concept of the library, that you can import things that other people have created. Version 1, the closest thing we had to this, there was a tool um, called AutoCare, uh, which would allow you to link your API key to this external website and it would whip up a character for you. Version 2 takes that sort of idea to the extreme, uh, letting you get full customizability with what you want to be building. Uh, we'll go through an example later, but the point is everyone can use libraries, but only patrons can create and edit them. Um, at this point, I'd also like to put a big asterisk, which is that um, 
If you want to use version 2 identically to version 1, you can. There is a strong learning curve because the UI has shifted a bunch and there's some name changes, some formulas have changed, but truthfully, if you want to use version 2 like you did version 1, you can. At this point in time, there is pretty much 100% feature parity. There's a couple of things which don't line up exactly the same, but you really honestly can. And so if you had a super, super homebrew heavy character sheet that no one has built a library for in V2, if you were capable of building it in V1, I promise you, you are capable of building it in V2. The third thing that being a patron grants you is an increased number of active character slots. This was not a thing in V1, and it's something we'll round back to in a couple of minutes. Um, don't panic. I promise it's going to make sense when we get there. And finally, four, if you're a patron tier high enough, you get invitation links, which will allow free users to get the first three benefits of patronage. That's the dark mode, creating, creating and editing libraries, and increasing their number of active characters. Um, if you are of a patronage tier high enough to grant benefits, you'll go to your account settings over here, and there will be a, under Patreon, there'll be a section that lets you create your invitation links. I mentioned active characters. Now, you might be frightened when you hear that. You might think, well, version one, I had unlimited characters. Do I not get that in version two anymore? And the answer to this is, a bit complicated. You do get infinite characters. Technically, there's a limit at like probably 500, but within reasonability, there's not going to be a limit on the number of characters you can create. However, there is now a limit on the number of characters that can be active at the same time. Um, for most people, that's going to be five characters, which is generally fine. What does a character being active mean? It just means that you're able to uh, manipulate the character sheet. In version 2, you do a lot of manipulation. There's a lot more buttons. Your character sheet is updating a lot more than it was in V1. And so, so long as you're not actively controlling five different characters in a campaign or in a series of campaigns, this isn't really going to affect you. At any time you can press an archive button which will allow you to deactivate a character and you can reactivate it at any time you want. Also, if you do start pushing up against that 500 character limit somehow, you can download your characters as JSON files and re-upload them later. It's going to be a bit more involved and the reason that we do this, the reason that this is now a limitation on your account is because version 2 characters are a lot more computationally demanding and we just can't have hundreds and hundreds of characters per account uh, all active at the same time. If you are a patron though you do get that uh, number of active characters increased I think it goes from like 5 to 10 then up to 50. Um, actually it looks like it, it goes up to 20 somewhere in there first I don't know the exact distribution that's something you can find on the patron website. Okay, will there be a migration pathway from V1 characters to V2 characters? This is an answer that's changed a lot over the development of version 2. At one point, it was sort of expected that version 2 would replace version 1, and that yes, there would be a migration pathway, but version 2 has kind of diverged so much from the design philosophy expressed in version 1 that it's just, it doesn't make sense to migrate characters from v1 to v2 v2 characters if you're building them in the way that v2 wants you to and like i said before you can build version 2 characters just like you built version 1 characters if you want but version 2 has a design philosophy that sort of pushes you to making characters in a certain way and if you're doing that and you're using v2 to its full capabilities you don't want a ported version 1 character. It's so quick and it's so simple to remake characters in V2 from version 1 in the way that V2 wants you to using libraries, so long as you don't have heavy homebrew, that you would just always want to remake them. 
Um, it used to be that we were going to shut version 1 down after version 2 became out and there was a sort of transition period, but we've decided that version 1 is always going to be available at old.dicecloud.com. Your characters from version 1 will always be there, they're never going to get archived, they're never going to get forcibly moved over. However, there is going to be a slight push for users to migrate over to V2 to try it out and to remake their active characters on version 2. Okay, here's the big one. Uh, this is the deal breaker for a lot of people. Is version 2 compatible with Avery? And the answer is not yet. Also, another asterisk here, and you probably don't want it to be. So, uh, there is an API. For version 2, which means that theoretically uh, the team over at Avray, Avry, however you want to pronounce that, I believe Avry is technically the correct one, um, the team over there could make uh, a, a way, a pipeline for Avray to interact with DiceCloud v2. But there needs to be a lot of work put in from the DiceCloud side as well, primarily by library authors, such as myself, to create a stable base. The way V2 works is way different than V1, and it's got a lot more customizability. Um, and because of that, there needs to be a very Avery specific base. And it's going to look a lot like V1, and you're not going to get a lot of what V2 has to offer. Because this is kind of the honest truth of it, is that if you're using V2 to its full potential, you probably don't need to use Avery. Everything Avery did, the, the custom counters, the casting of spells, the building of characters, all of that, except for initiative orders. Initiative orders, which by the way is a planned feature for 2.x, on Dice Cloud, but uh, the combat management in Avery was nice, um, and that's something that's still lacking from V2. But most of the general stuff V2 can accomplish on its own, and will send over to Discord. Again, there is I can fully concede there are a few things Avery can still do that Dice Cloud V2 can't, and those would certainly be nice. But with the way things are going. It's more likely that Dice Cut is either going to get its own bot or is going to get features in the actual website that make it so that it has that sort of same feature parity with Avray. The it's unlike I mean it, we're probably still gonna make it compatible with Avray eventually, but it's again it's just sort of not meshing with that design philosophy. Um, Instead, what we do is something called webhooks, where um, everything is computed within the website on DiceCloud, and then you can post outputs of your user sheet. And we'll get into this a bit more in a bit once we make a character. You can post those outputs to a Discord channel. And this is good for most Discord-based D&D games. It's what I use for my personal games. Admittedly, right now, there's not a great solution for West March's games where you're constantly um, changing the channel in which your character is active in. Okay, now we're gonna start moving into character creation and managing your characters now. Now, if you go to make a character, uh, you just click on your characters tab, you click the plus button, um, you name it, alignment, gender, level, next. You'll notice here you get an option to select what libraries you want to use. And it starts out with the systems reference document, the SRD for 5e. This is extremely limited, as I'm sure you are all aware. And so we can't advertise this on the front of the, of the website for copyright reasons, but if you join the Discord and you go to the libraries channel, what you'll be able to find in there is a link to the library collection, the Libraries of Vexus. This is something that a team of developers along with myself have spent the past two years working on. Um, we're trying to map all of the D&D 5e books onto uh, Dice Cloud V2. And right now we have finished the PHP and most of the things from other books, although I don't think any of the other books are complete yet except for the PHP. Um, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to the Discord, you're going to want to find the link that brings you to here, um, and you're going to want to then click the subscribe button once you're logged into your account. And now what that does is when you go back here to make your character, 
Now you have the option to select the libraries of Vexus. And in fact, I usually like to deselect the XRD and only subscribe to the libraries of Vexus. There's a lot of libraries involved with the collection. Um, if you want to read about them more, all of them have a little description that describes what they do. Also, if you come over to our private libraries of Vexus Discord server, there's even longer descriptions of what they all do. Um, but you just want to subscribe to them all, essentially. And then you press create. And this brings you to your new character. You know it's going to start you off, you notice it's going to start you off on the build tab here. This is a new tab that didn't exist in version 1. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to walk through what all of the different tabs are and then we're going to end back up here on build. Going over to the stats page, it looks pretty empty and you notice all none of my stats are set. And what I want to say here is that everything you're seeing is because we've installed the libraries of Vexus. If you start a brand new character, in fact, I'm going to do this. I'm going to open up another uh, Dice Cloud tab. And we're going to start another new character. And this will be empty character. Just go ahead and create it. Um, and you notice that I don't have a rule set installed. And this is where I could add the SRD or Tamarins. Uh, Tamarins is the main base for Libraries of Vexus. Uh, it's just empty here. The only thing that we get is the short rest and long rest button. That's it. And you can, at this point, if you wanted to, if you wanted to do everything yourself, you could just start building it just like V1. You could go here, you could add your 50 plus, uh, you don't have a constitution modifier yet because you don't have a constitution. You could go here and you could add hit points and call it hit points and make it a health bar and then create. And if you want, you can go back in and you can give it, you know, a uh, half filled color of orange and empty color of this and you know maybe I want a green when it's like this and maybe a lighter green glows and oh look now it's like that. My point is and I'm gonna like I said I'm gonna be making a series of videos that goes over what all of these properties are attributes, skills, action, buffs. We got features over here, we've got items and containers, we've got spell lists and spells. A lot of this might look familiar from V1. You've got notes, and if you go over to your build tab, actually, if you uh, open up your tree tab, and I'll get into all of this later, uh, we get the full range of properties we can add. And you can see there are a lot. I'm going to turn off the help. Um, there are a lot of features, and I'm going to be making a video on each of these, and it's going to walk you through exactly what they are and how they work and how you can add them. But going back to our main character here, the libraries of Vexus come with this sort of 5e-centric pre-installed selection of stats, skills, saving throws, your hit points, um, and that's nice because it lets you get set up. We've chosen a lot of variable names to be similar to version 1 variables, so if you're already familiar with version 1, it should be pretty easy to set up your own custom formulas in here. But again, kind of the point of v2 is that if you're doing, if you're avoiding a lot of big homebrew, you don't really need to write formulas anymore. Everyone who has built the library has already done all of that for you. Uh, so your stats are where you're going to find your stats, just like V1, and also any actions. Actions existed in version 1, but not nearly to the same extent that they exist in version 2, and you're going to see that a lot more here. Uh, your features tab, which is primarily just text now. I remember in V1 you used to be able to click use and things like that. Anything that you would be using a feature is now going to be an action. It's not going to be on your stats page. Inventory is almost identical to version 1. Spells, almost identical to version 1. The difference being that if you want to cast a spell, you're not doing that from the spell page anymore. You're doing that from the stats page. Generally, features, inventory, spells, and journal are all just... Uh, information about your character. If you want to actually interact with your sheet, it's going to be done from the stats page. The stats page is kind of your home base for working with your character. And the build tab, the last one, is your home base for building your character. Okay, so first things first, we've got a uh, point by array. And now at this point, I want to say that the rest of this video is going to be very libraries of Ve Vexus centric. Um, almost everything I'm going to be talking about from this point on is going to be dealing with Tamron's Library of Everything and Obadiah's Bag of Slot Fillers. Um, if you're working with an SRD or a different Dice Cloud base, I'm not sure how helpful the rest of this video is going to be to you. It might be a bit, but I'm really designing this video series uh, with sort of LOV in mind as like, this is what you're going to be working with. So right here we've got Stat Assignment. You can set this to anything you want. 
he knows we've got this, you know, bad orange number here that, you know, might be warding off, but you can set this to whatever you want. It's designed to be set up to automatically calculate and evaluate according to point by rules. So when uh, in 5e, 5th edition point by, you get 27 points to spend, and there's certain limits. You can't take lower than 8, and I don't think you can go higher than 15, yeah. Um, and so you notice, right now, all of my stats cost 28, which is more than 27. That's because they're lower than the minimum or higher than the maximum. But if I bring these within range, and I start setting up my standard array here. It's, I missed 13, didn't I? There we are. Uh, you can see now I'm within point by, and you know maybe I want to do a couple of adjustments here. And now I'm a bit over. I can probably drop this down, bring me back to 27, just like that. And Again, maybe you rolled for stats. Maybe you don't follow the standard array or point by rules. Maybe your DM gives you more points. Maybe they give you less points. All of that's calculated here. You can go over on point by and close this and your stats are still fine. Uh, but if you want to follow point by, you can also just set it within there, close, and now you're done. If you want to go back later and change your stats, you just click this. If you're tired of seeing this block, if it's annoying you, you click the X. If you want to get back to it, you click this little dotted thing. Never mind. Uh, you click this, you click stat assignment. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, you just expand the rule set and it's right there front and center for you. Um, and then you can just press edit. Now, uh, the general sort of design philosophy of V2 is we keep serving you up these boxes and you're going to keep clicking those boxes until there aren't boxes to click left. Um, our starting class, let's just, I'm just going to spam through this. It's, I don't even remember what my stats are. Okay, I took high strength icon. Let's do a barbarian. Um, race, we've got a lot of races. Uh, I'm going to suggest you use the search bar for these. Um, now, uh, a little note really quick about the search bar in V2. You do need to type the full word. If I want human and I type hum, I'm not going to get anything. If I type human, there we go. Now I got my human. You cry, where is variant human? I want variant human. It's okay, we got uh, human types. Uh, with Eberron dragon marks, we had to add a lot more of these, so we just had it be a second step. You can choose your default human, you can choose your variant human. I'm going variant human. Um, then, I mean, you can just see how this is gonna work. We just keep getting boxes. I get proficiency in a skill, cool, here's perception. Um, we're already accounting for if you already have proficiency in a skill, we just don't show it to you then. Um, maybe I want a language. Maybe my language isn't one of the default 5e languages. It's okay, we got you covered. You got a custom language right here. Maybe I decided I don't want to be a very inhuman. Okay, well I expand this. I go to my race and I click trash. And all of a sudden I've got my race back. Maybe I want to be a custom race. It's okay, we got you covered. You got a custom lineage here if you want. This follows Tasha's rules. Maybe you don't want to follow Tasha's rule. Maybe you actually have a custom race that's totally different. I know that some developers in the Libraries of Texas community have created developer libraries that allow you to build custom race through this UI, but again, you can just use it like V1. Your custom race gives you a feature, you click the plus button on the features page, you write out your feature. Let's you import one uh, from a different race, you can just do that. Maybe you get the city secrets feature from the background. Anyways, let's keep building here. Um, let's level up to level three and take a subclass. To level up, you just press the level up button. Take Barbarian two. Take Barbarian three. I get my Primal Path. Let's go... Um, actually, none of these are going to give me spell slots, are they? I thought Wild Magic might, but I'm realizing now. I don't think that's the case. Um, maybe let's multi-class then. Uh, I don't have anything that's going to let me multi-class because I probably need higher charisma. My charisma is at... Let's see, what, what, what can I spell cast with? It's going to be charisma. Okay, hold on. Let me just make this easy. I'm now a master spellcaster. Okay, now let me multi-class into source. Okay, now... Uh, add my spell slot structure in here so I can demonstrate how to do spells, spell casting type. I'm a spell caster, not a packed magic user. Um, spells known. Let's see. I want some level three spells. Uh, sorry, spell level three. There we go. Maybe I want some necromancy spells. What is this? What is like that. There we go. Necromancy spell. Um, you can sort by tags. All spells have these tags involved with them, which you can 
find under the advanced. Spell level 8, 5e. It's a sorcerer spell, it's a wizard spell, arcane trickster rogue spell. It has a spell save involved with it. Actually, let's get some spell attacks. There we go. Um, ice knife, Bigsby's. Cool. Those are the spells I get. Cantrips. I probably need to be higher level. Um, Mage Hand and Firebolt. Uh, we get two more. Uh, sure. Cool. Um, I think that's probably all I'm going to need to demonstrate things. Uh, let me get some skill proficiencies too. This is going to be a wacky character. I'm not really thinking about it. Optional feature from Tasha's? Yes? No? Up to you. Um, another thing I want to mention really quick, if your DM has banned a certain book, you can expand the sources down here and you can just remove that book and you'll no longer be offered options from that book. Be crazy if you had to delete the player's handbook, but you totally could. I think that's in, yeah, player's handbook. You could just delete that. I don't know what that would look like. It'd probably be crazy. Um, yeah, sure. Give me, give me more proficiencies. I love proficiencies. Uh, cool. You get the idea. Anyways, we go over to our stats page, and you can see it's a bit more filled out now. Now I'm going to open up my action bar over here. This is a great place where you can just roll dice if you want to. Uh, you can evaluate expressions. So let's say, what's my hit points? Hit points are 38. Hit points, I can type, greater than 10? True. You can evaluate expressions in here. Also, uh, anything you write in there is going to be reported to a webhook. So if you want, you can go here edit details, settings, and you can paste a webhook URL here for Discord, and specifically only Discord. We might in the future uh, make this uh, a general webhook URL, but right now it only works for Discord webhooks. Um, and uh, yeah, anything you type in your action bar will get reported to that webhook, that Discord webhook, and it'll be posted in a Discord channel. Um, how am I doing on time? Okay, I do need to speed things up a bit here. Um, for your general page, you've got a whole bunch of new cards here. You can press these buttons. Now I am raging. You can see I get my temp HP, I get my resistances, I get my wild surge because I'm a wild magic barbarian. I can press my end rage and that will end my rage. And if I want to end my wild surge for whatever reason, uh, I can just click the trash can there. You can see now I have two uses left. Maybe I take a long rest. Now that's gone back up to three uses. V2 is super automated. It's super nice. Um, Maybe I want to cast a spell. I press the cast a spell button. I select what I want to do it is. Maybe I want to cast it as a ritual. Maybe I want to cast a first level spell. I click ice knife. I click cast. I get to roll. Maybe I have disadvantage. Maybe I have advantage depending on the situation. I click roll. Oh, it does everything. It shows me my rolls. It's I had advantage on my two hit. I got 19 plus 7. If I hit, that means I did 4 piercing damage. Uh, they have to make a DC 15 dexterity saving throw. If they fail, they take 9 cold damage. V2 super automated, super nice. All of this, you can send it straight to your DM via Discord using webhooks. Maybe I want to make a nature check. I go over here to my nature. I press the little proficiency bobble. I have disadvantage on it. I roll. It tells me what I got. I rolled in that one. Fantastic. I have zero speed because I never designed. I never put a race in for this character. I want to roll straight charisma. I click that. Anything that's got a little uh, plus next to it, I can hit and I can roll that die. V2, super powerful. Um, let me quickly just add a race in, no, start here, starting equipment. Just give me the barbarian starting equipment. I get a weapon choice, woo, battle axe, fantastic. And another one, a dagger, great. I go over to my inventory, I take my, uh, my dagger, I equip it, now I go back over to my stats, uh, now I have a dagger attack, maybe I want to throw my dagger, I click that. Whoops, now I don't have any more daggers left because I threw it. <laughs> Go back over to my inventory, click the little abacus, plus one, that's a little hot tip. Uh, if you're editing anything that can change its value, you, you can type plus or you can type minus and it will automatically just put the uh, correct operation in there. I want to subtract 10 hit, hit points, it goes down there. I want to subtract 30 hit points, I'm down, I'm dead, I've gotten healed. <sighs> Everything that's bolded is something that will change. You can edit it to uh, look at what that change means. You can see when I level up in Barbarian, it's going to increase the indice on this array. Um, yeah. I'll go into all of this in more detail in my more technical videos, but again, this is kind of 
how I want to wrap up this video. A couple more things, I guess, if you want to add a picture URL or an avatar picture URL, you can do that through here. If you want to enable your tree tab, if you really want to see how everything works, you can do that through your advanced settings. And I mean, this is just going to show you all the nitty gritty of your character and you can really inspect it and see how everything works. We've got a conditional benefit. Yeah, I'm going to get into all of these properties in a lot more detail. I am running out of time. I did want to get this video out as fast as I could. I might go back and remake this video more professionally later. Um, but I hope this introductory video answers a lot of initial questions you might have about version 2. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please share this with other people if you know they're interested in version 2, or maybe they use version 1 and don't know about version 2. Please share this with them. Otherwise, stay tuned for the future when we um, release these other videos that are going to teach you all about the various properties. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you later.